for spring break. Y'all are a rowdy bunch, I'm telling you. I am glad you're here. I want to have a brief word of prayer, and then we'll begin our worship time. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for this day. It's the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that you bless us now. Lord, we honor you. You're the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Thank you again for what you're going to do in this service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's stand together and worship. Morning, church. Let's sing this morning to our Savior. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. 
Amen. We have many reasons this morning to sing to our Savior. Amen. Because we can stand in this place for those who have put their trust in him and know that we belong to him, that we are his sons and his daughters. Amen. Amen. That should give us excitement this morning to know that we belong to the Savior, to the one who gives us life, to our hope. Let's sing this together, church.
just sing those words this morning one more time. Who the sun sets free. Thank you, Jesus, for that freedom that is found in you alone. You sing, church, your voices this morning. Who the sun sets free, always free. There's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am. So we're going to... Um we're going to introduce this song. Actually, before we start, uh, this song here is called Death Was Arrested. And um, Josh, if you want to make sure that that was Death Was Arrested. But, uh, you know, one of the things um, that this song paints, it paints a picture of how everything in this world, it, it, the scripture talks about when, when we see Jesus face to face, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And you know, no, nothing in this place will be left standing. And what, that, what this is saying, death was arrested, is death has no choice than to surrender to the power of life that Jesus gives. And this song paints a picture, and I hope, I know you've done it a few times, and, and it's just amazing to know the power of Jesus the power of his love and his grace for us. So as we sing, if you don't know it, listen to the words, read the words. If you do know it, please worship with us. And there's a part where it says, oh, we're free, free forever, we're free. And that is a proclamation for those who have tasted and seen of, of his grace that we have been sealed and redeemed, amen? And we are forever free. So let's sing, church.
church. Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as the heaven But we know better than that, you see. But then Jesus arose with our freedom. I want you to be seated. The Bible says when we give our hearts and our lives to Jesus Christ, we become a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You're glad of that today. Amen. I know that I am. Every day for the believer really is celebrating the Easter story. Every day for the believer. Today is our time to give back to the Lord. What rightfully belongs to him is our tithe and our offering. And I want us to do that today. Before I do that, I want to thank you as a guest for being here. Uh, we have a guest preacher who's here, and we're glad you're here. Uh, Brother Lee and others who are in our congregation. At the end of the service, would you uh, come by and see Diane and I? We have a gift basket for you. We'd like to get to know you as well. Some of you have been with us two or three times, and you have not yet come by to get your gift. Please do that today. Man, we've got baskets, and Brother Randy, he's always ready to give out baskets and to give out those gifts. We want to welcome you to 1025 Church. I am so grateful for what the Lord is doing in this place. Let me bow together, and let us bow together for a time of prayer. Father, just to see happy faces singing, to watch the children here at the front singing, to see students to my left singing, and adults alike as we worshiped you, to know, Lord, that you have set us free. And when we become a believer, we've been set free indeed for all eternity. Lord, I want to just thank you for forgiving me of my sin and coming to live in my heart. And I thank you, Lord, that 50-plus uh, years ago, I gave my life to Jesus. You sought me, you found me, Lord, you didn't even bought me already. And I thank you, Lord, that you, on that Sunday morning, that you came and you lived in my heart. I want to ask you today, Lord, would you do that amongst some of our folks here? There are some men here. There are some women here. There are some students in this room who have not yet received Christ as Savior, who have not yet yielded their life to you. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that today would be the day of their salvation that when the old would have been passed away, and now that all things will become new for them. I pray for that. Lord, you've blessed us with giving us so much in this life. We are, we are just so blessed. I want to ask now that you bless the gift 
and the givers. Lord, bless us as we give back to you. Bless the tithe. Bless the offering. And Lord, uh, may it be for the furtherance of the kingdom of God that here at 1025 Church that we'll win more men and women and boys and girls than ever before. And the Lord, folks will say, hey, man, they're alive at 1025. Folks will understand that it's at the cross where grace is found. And Lord, I pray that in this hour that you'll draw us closer to you and closer to one another than ever before. But may, Lord, we we always remember that great commission that we're to go out into the highways and to the hedges and to compel them to come in. And we're to share the gospel, being witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world, that we're to tell the good news of Jesus and his love. Lord, thank you for being the Lion of Judah, but thank you for being the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
I think Harry will feel like fun. Wow, it's hard. I don't know. I still don't know. It's so hard. Oh no. I feel like I should be whispering. I think it will have lots of animals. And I bet the rivers are gonna be my favorite drink, which is Dr. Pepper, the one I'm about to have. Um, I think it's gonna be amazing. Sunny? <laughs> I got to see pieces of heaven. It's going to have a lot of people. We'll have cotton candy. Video games, I guess. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. I think heaven's going to smell like caramel. I would want to play with God in heaven. I think we'll fly. go fly like astronauts. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, I feel like that sometimes when you ask me questions. I don't know. Take your Bible and turn with me to Revelation chapter 5. We are still in the throne room of God in chapter 5, not yet getting to the tribulation. I kind of jumped ahead of myself last week, but I'm in chapter 5 today, just following up with what we dealt with last week in chapter 4. If you'll remember, uh, we talked about how that heaven's sounding sweeter because we've got a welcome uh, by God or from God. There are the witnesses of God who are there. The Word of God is in heaven, and there we serve a worthy God. In chapter 5, still being in the throne room of heaven, I've entitled it, Sign, Seal, Delivered. I know what you're thinking about, Stevie Wonder, aren't you? Here I am, baby. Sign, seal, delivered. I'm yours. I'm sorry, Diane. Uh, look, I was looking at you. She wasn't even looking up at me. She was looking at the floor. Um, I believe chapter 5 literally signed, sealed, and delivered. Uh, we kind of dealt with that this week in our office and have for the last two weeks. We've been working uh, to get us as Grace Baptist Church, DBA, doing business as 1025 Church. And so now you can write a check to Grace Baptist R to 1025 and uh, probably be easier just write 1025 Church and uh, we can take your money. Amen. My daddy taught me a long time ago, never turn away money. Always take money. And uh, so... We've been working on that, and one of the things we had to do was we had to work with the county, not the state, not the secretary of the state, but in our county, just with the county, and they had to give us this form. Uh, I had to sign it. Uh, a notary had to seal it, and then Miss Barbara had to deliver it to the bank, and then they had to approve, etc. So it was signed, sealed, and delivered. In chapter 5 here, that's really what is about to take place. I mean, it's going to be now before the time of the tribulation period as if the Lord Jesus Christ is reminding us of what happened before. Uh, even if you remember, uh, chapter 1 talks about the things that uh, were before, and we got into chapter 2 and 3 with the seven letters to the churches and those things that are present, and now we're looking for those things that are about to come. And so chapter 5, again with chapter 4, is a very transitional chapter. And so I've entitled it, Signed, sealed, delivered. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to read these 14 verses. Then I want us to go back and just walk through them as quickly as I can. That means you're going to have to listen quickly. And that means if you'll say an amen or hallelujah or praise the Lord or a little something, every once in a while that'll help me move it a little faster. Okay? Now, if you go act dead, I'll get down there and run the pews and our chairs and run the aisles. And, but you got to help me, okay? Because this passage is extremely, thank you, brother. This passage is extremely important. Let's look at verse number 1 of chapter 5. And you'll kind of see how that uh, uh, the Lord led Miss Crystal to choose some of these songs and how that these songs went so well with this text today. Look at beginning at verse 1. The Bible says in verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him 
that is God who sits on the throne, a scroll that was written inside and on the back with uh, and sealed with seven seals. And then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open up the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth, which was hell, was able to open the scroll or even to look at it. And John said, so I wept much. I bitterly wept because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, don't weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And he says, I looked. And behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And then Jesus came, he came, and he took the scroll out of the right hand of God who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. Church, did y'all hear me? They sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You've made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. And then he says, I looked. And I heard the voice of many angels across the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And they were saying, they were shouting with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, everyone joined together, and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard them saying, every one of them rejoicing, saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb Jesus forever and ever. And then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders, the raptured church, fell down, and they worshipped him who lives forever and ever. What I want you to see this morning, first of all, is that the scroll is sealed. Now, what is this scroll? Well, this scroll was not a bound book. Scrolls were made of those days of rushes that grew along the river. Uh, many theologians believe it's estimated that this scroll was probably about 15 feet in length. Uh, it is now in the right hand of God. And the Bible says that this scroll is sealed with seven seals. Now you'll notice the text. It says it is sealed that on both sides, at the very front and on the back. In other words, there's no need to add anything or take anything away from this book. It is complete. And the sealing means that it's not to be tampered with. The sealing means that it is private. It's just like when you send a letter out. You uh, seal that letter. Sometimes I even take that letter and I put on there uh, for only or private message, etc., Believe it or not, sometimes preachers get those kind of things. But anyway, y'all are not with me at all. <laughs> hey, I got one today that had money in it. Amen. That was good. No, don't clap. I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. No, I'm not kidding. 
But it's that sealing. It's private, Brother Ray. It means literally no one else is to tamper with it. No one else is to open it up. Now, y'all listen to this. The scroll here that is referred to eight times in chapter 5 is literally Christ's title deed. It's his title deed to creation. It's his title deed to heaven. It's his title deed to all eternity. And it literally means it cannot be changed. This title deed, if we think about it, it would be a legal document that would be executed and acknowledged under the seal and in the presence of a notary, evidencing the, literally the right of ownership. Now, this title deed, the scroll here, is all ownership. And guess who owns it all? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, All authority is given unto me, where? In heaven and in earth. Jesus has the title deed to all eternity. Now listen to this. And if you give your heart and your life to Jesus, he has the title deed of your soul. Can't get any better than that. That I am his, he is mine. Brother Nick, I am in Christ, Christ is in me. Yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And the scroll is significant because it is sealed. The work of redemption is complete. But secondly, I not only want you to see that the scroll is sealed, I want you to see that the scene is serious. How serious is it? Well, the Bible says there's a strong angel. Most again believe this was Gabriel. And the Bible says that there was absolutely no one in heaven, no one on earth, no one under the earth or in hell. No one could open the scroll. And the Bible says, John the Beloved, the tender-hearted John the Apostle, the Bible says he wept. He was so sensitive to God. He was so sensitive to the vision of God, of Jesus, that he had given to John on the Isle of Patmos. And now the scroll is there, and it's in the right hand of God. And it needs to be opened. There are seven seals there representing his perfection. And the Bible says that John wept. I believe John had seen Jesus weep as well. The shortest verse in the Bible is, Jesus wept. And now John, bitterly weeping, crying out and saying, there's no one available. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, listen, this is amazing to me. The elders and the Bible says the, the 24, which is representative, remember, of the raptured church that's been called up to be with the Lord that we talked about at the beginning of chapter 4 last week. And the Bible says that the church began to say, oh, yes, there is one. Now, I want to tell you this, and I want you to listen to me closely. When you and I have been saved and we've been redeemed with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and he has made a difference in our life, we cannot help but say, there is one. Yes, there is one who can open up the door to eternity. Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the living way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And there is one. The church reclaimed. The church proclaimed. The church shouted out. There is one who can open up the scroll. And the scene was serious. I mean, they had a worship setting at this point. As a matter of fact, you're going to see in this passage of Scripture in a moment where the saints of God in heaven were singing, the angels in heaven were shouting, and then all together they were praising the Lord. It's a pretty serious setting here. Now, this is amazes me what's so neat about this. He was looking for a lion. The Lion of Judah. But guess who he found? The Lamb of God. Who takes away the sin of the world. 
Yes, our God is a lion. Uh, I went through a stage in ministry where we were collecting lions and lambs. And if you're in my office, sometimes just look around, you'll see lions and lambs. And I just love that picture because it is the lion of Judah with all authority and with judgment. But it is the compassion and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ as the lamb. As John the Baptist cried out and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Can you remember and go all the way back to Abraham and Isaac? Do you remember when Abraham was told to take Isaac and to sacrifice his only son? Do you remember what Isaac said to his daddy? Where is the lamb? And now in the book of the Revelation, we find, listen, the lamb who was slain. That word slain, and and I hope this doesn't gross you out, it's a very strong word. It's used three, possibly even four or five times, depending on the translation that you're reading. It's used often in this text. It literally means that they would take the knife or the sword or whatever, and they would cut the lamb so it would literally bleed out. It was a horrible death. Excruciating pain for the lamb. I want you to listen. Our Jesus took upon your sin, my sin. He took upon the world's sin. And he gave himself. Listen, they beat him. Forty save one. They, they, they slapped him. They spat upon him. They took a crown of thorns and placed it upon his brow. I mean, they drove spikes into his hands and to his feet. I mean, they thrust a spear into his side, and the Bible says blood and water flow down. And Jesus Christ died voluntarily. Listen to me. He voluntarily became the Lamb of God so that you and I could be saved. He gave himself. He was slain for your sin. And he was slain for my sin. Upon the cross of Calvary. The scene was serious here. Very serious in the throne room. As Jesus had the scroll in his right hand. But there was only one (laughs) who could take the scroll. Listen, get this young folks. Y'all look this way. There was only one who could take the scroll. There was only one who could open it. And there was only one who could look at it. And his name is Jesus. And you know what? Look this way. He loves you so much. The Bible says once you were dead in your trespasses and sin, there had to come a time in your life that you recognized and realized that you were a sinner and you needed a Savior. And do you know what Jesus did for you? Jesus gave himself up as a ransom for you. Sacrificed his life so that you could have life. He gave himself up as the sacrificial lamb of God, the atonement for your sin so that you could have a personal relationship with Jesus. And you know what, church? I think that deserves just a good round of applause. Look what he did for us. Look what he did for us. Oh yeah, the scene was serious. Jesus Christ did that so that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly. But I want you to see the third thing in this passage. I want you to see the surety or the Savior is surety. You say, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's a noun. It means that he has all the assurance that we need. It means completion. It means perfection. It means that he paid it all. Paid in full, Jesus Christ Upon the cross of Calvary. I want you to look with me for just a moment into verse number six one more time. The Bible says, He looked and behold in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures. Remember what those living creatures are? Symbolic of the Gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
and John. And the Bible says in that setting that the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, in the midst of even the elders, the church, he stood a lamb as though it had been slain. It had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, talking about his completion, his authority. And then the Bible says he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. From verses 8 through 14... I find the surety of the Savior. Or that the Savior is all we need. Now I want you to think about that lion and lamb for just a moment. I want you to think about how that it deals with that of suffering and glory. It literally deals with the crown and the cross. Jesus is called the lamb 29 times in the book of the Revelation. Isaac had said, where is the lamb? John says, worthy now is the Lamb. Even though in the midst of all of the suffering, even in the midst of his death, there is life. Death has been arrested. New life begins. Heaven sings about the cross. Here's the prayer of God's people as he's emphasized in the vial of incense, this passage says. God hears our prayers. Now, I want you to notice the Savior within this passage. He is worthy of all praise. If you look at verse 9 and 10, the Bible says he sings the saints, sing a new song. They talk about how that they have been redeemed, and they were redeemed by the blood, and that how that he has made us join heirs with the Lord Jesus, kings and priests to our God. And the Bible says we will reign forever on earth. And then the Bible says the angels begin to shout, and they're shouting, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Now think about it with Christ on earth. Some said he was worthy of death, but now in heaven he's worthy of praise. Some said in Matthew chapter 12 verse 24 that Christ on earth, that he worked the, the works and the power by Satan. But now the Bible says in heaven he is worthy of power. Think about what it said about Christ on earth. For I, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For our sake he became poor, but now in heaven he is worthy of riches. On earth, the Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who perish, but in heaven he is worthy of wisdom. Christ on earth, he was crucified in weakness, but now in heaven he is worthy of strength. On earth it was Christ that said, you dishonor me. Now in heaven he is to be honored. It was Christ on earth that said, I seek not mine own glory, but now in heaven he is worthy of glory. It was Christ on earth, they said in Galatians 3, was made a curse for every one of us, but now in heaven he is worthy worthy of blessing. I want to tell you today, Jesus Christ is my all and all, and he died so that you and I could live. He's worthy. He's worthy. Now here's the thought. Why would you wait or think you can wait? To know him as your savior. You can't. You can't wait. You say, why do you get so excited? He's my savior. He's my Lord. He's my friend. He's the one that reached down and saved an old boy that needed Jesus more than anything. He saved my dad. We went down yesterday to celebrate Diane's aunt, 90-year birthday, 90-year-old birthday, surprise party. And many of us came from the Atlanta area, drove down to celebrate. And uh, before we did, though, we, uh, we had to stop off at Country's Barbecue. If you ever go to Columbus, you look up Country's Barbecue, there are three of them. 
One off of Macon Road, one on Broadway, and then one on Main Street, Main Street, Veterans Parkway. And you know what we did? We went and we saw my two brothers and my sister, my family. It is only a miracle of God because he reached down and he saved my dad at 36 years of age. Took him out of the clubs and the honky-tonks. Put him in the churches and in the house of God. That we're all born again. Believers in Christ. If I, don't, I don't ever want to forget where I came from. But I certainly don't want to ever forget and stop shouting where I'm going. You can't wait. You can't wait. You see, one of these days, Jesus is coming back. And he's going to rapture and claim his church. The bride of Christ. And we read that last week. Out of the Thessalonians, and, and the Bible says that, that he'll, the trumpet of God will sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And all of us who are alive and remain will be called up, will be raptured to be with the Lord in the air. And the Bible says, we'll be with him for all eternity. And the Bible says, comfort one another with these words. You cannot wait. We begin chapter 6 in the opening of the seals. It's the tribulation. You don't want to be left behind. One of these days when Jesus comes back and splits the eastern skies, or whether I go by death. And by the way, yesterday we had a funeral here for a 39 year old girl. 39 years old. Old accident lost her life, leaving behind a husband who's fighting for his life, and a 11 year old, and a 17 year old, and a 21 year old boy. Sir, you can't afford to wait, ma'am. You can't afford to wait. Because in this throne room, as we've looked at it for the last two weeks, Jesus has been uplifted. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus himself said in John 3, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men and myself. And in these last, all we've done is lift up Jesus. Can I tell you why? He's all the surety that you need. A man can gain the whole world and lose his own soul. I want every eye on me. I want you young folks to look here. I want all you folks in the corners to look. Whether it be by the rapture, whether it be by death. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. There's not a one of us in this room that will escape the judgment. We will all face God on his throne. That's right. You cannot afford to face him on your own. You can't afford to face him alone. You see, this is where I, my heart is troubled the most is that many people believe, well, I'm, I'm religious. That'll get me there. Religion will not get you to the throne room with God. But, but you don't understand, Brother Tommy, I'm a good person. Being a good person is not going to get you to the throne of God. So I want you all to hear this. And we're going to stand, and we're going to give an invitation. You need to hear this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one mediator between man and God, 
and his name is Jesus. Now listen to this. He lives, Brother W.H., I love you. He lives forever and ever. And guess what? If you will know him, you too can live forever and ever. He paid it all. He paid it all so that you and I could live. I want you to stand with me and bow your heads for just a moment. Wow. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. How important is it for you to be saved now? How important is it for you to be saved now? Now listen to me. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. I'm going to ask Miss Jessica if she would begin to play. I'm going to ask our guys and gals to be ready to receive you. Now listen to me. How important is it for you to receive Jesus right now? Here's why. This is your opportunity. Here's what Jesus Christ tells us. It's how he tells us we can be saved. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. There's none righteous, no, not one. And the Bible says that because we have sinned, that God demonstrated his love toward us and that while I was yet a sinner, Jesus Christ died for me. They buried him and on the third day he resurrected so that I might live. You're in this room today and you say, Brother Tommy, I know that I've sinned. I'm here today because I know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin. And I even believe as we face the Easter story that Jesus Christ resurrected. I believe all of that. I want you to listen. Now hear me. That's not enough. It's more than just knowing that we've done wrong. It's more than just knowing what Jesus did for us on the cross and how he will forgive us of our sin. There has to come a time in your life, and that time is right now. This is your opportunity, ma'am. This is your opportunity, sir. This is your opportunity, student. This is your opportunity to give your heart and your life to Jesus right now. You know what you got to do? You have to surrender your life. You have to confess your sin. Here's what the Bible says. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, the total being of man, and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you can be saved. So you've got to ask him to forgive you of your sin, repent of your sin, and to come live in your heart. You've got to do that today. This is your opportunity. This is how important it is. Jesus Christ died for you. If you had been the only person on the face of the earth, he still would have went to the cross of Calvary for your sin. The Bible says he died for all of our sins. Here's what I want to ask you to do today. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want to ask you to come to Jesus today. I want to ask you to come. And Brother Nick is here. Pastor Jojo's here as well. And, and Brother Ray and Brother Jerry and Miss Diane and Megan. Others are here to help you. I want to ask you with heads bowed and eyes closed. Right where you are right now. If you want to know Jesus as your Savior. And you want to be saved. This is your opportunity. No one is looking around. I want you to step out from where you are. We're not even going to begin to sing yet. Some of you are close to the front. Some of you are even in the back. But sir, you need to come to Jesus today. Will you just step out from where you are? If you're over here on the right side, Brother Nick and Brother Ray can help you. On this left side, Brother Jojo and, and Brother Jerry can help. I want you to come. Just step out from where you are right now. Please don't wait. Please don't wait. Let me help you with that. If you'll take the first step, the Lord Jesus will help you take that second one. Just come. 
come to Jesus. Those first five scrolls that are open, he says, come and see. Jesus said for salvation, come and see. Come on. So in a room of close to 400 folks, you're saying, oh, Brother Tommy, I'm not there yet. Oh, yes, you are. This is your opportunity. I beg with you, I plead with you to come to Jesus. Would you come? Just step out from where you are. You just come. Come to Jesus. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. In a moment, we're going to sing. But before we do, I want to offer an invitation to you again. If you need to make this your home, your place of worship, you want to make this your church home, we want you to come. We're willing and we're ready to receive you. Today would be a great day for you to make this your place of worship. If you just need to come and pray and say, Lord, thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you for saving me. Or maybe you have prayer needs that you want to pray for someone else. The altar is open for you. And every Sunday we've been seeing God do a great work in our midst. I want to pray just a very brief prayer. As soon as I pray, we'll begin to sing. Some of you did not come and you know you need to come give your heart to Jesus. Maybe when others begin to come, maybe you'll come. But I want to tell you, you need Jesus. this is your opportunity. That's why it's so important. Now, Father, songs have been sung. Sermons have been shared. Your spirit has moved in this room. You've convicted hearts and lives. Lord, you're ready to save men and women and students today. I pray that in this service right now, they'll yield to you. I ask you to save them. I pray for others who want to come and pray and others who want to make this their home. God, would you work among us now? We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. While we sing, all to Jesus I surrender, you come. You know God's calling, you come. He's calling, come. Come to the Lord, you come. Surrender everything you have to the Lord. You come. You come today. There are several men who are coming to pray. How about you? You come, you come and you pray. Some of you may need to come and give your hearts to Christ. Speak to these men. Let them help you. Speak to these ladies. Let them help you. You come today. You know God's calling. You come. You come today. You come. While we sing, you surrender everything to him. You come while we sing. And all to Jesus I surrender all. Me at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken take. Me Jesus take me. Sing another stanza. You come while we sing. Would you come? And all to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit true. We know that thou art mine. Sing it to him. you look at this look this way for just a moment miss jessica continue to play you know that god's speaking to your heart here's what i want to ask you to do don't leave these premises without giving your heart and your life to jesus at the end of the service uh, our staff will be around we're going to be out at the back uh, diane and i will be and some will be at the doors we've still got plenty of cards for you to give out 
that talk about our 1025 challenge on Easter Sunday. We believe that God's going to give us 1,025 folks in worship. And uh, we believe that. Amen, church? And we're going to work hard toward that. Amen, church? And uh, we're going to invite people. We're publicizing it everywhere, letting folks know that we want them here at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on that Sunday. Choir will be singing in both services. It's going to be a glory, hallelujah, shouting time. And uh, we're going to really get excited. We believe that. But there are those of us in this room who can help you. We want to encourage you. Please, if, if you'll look in front of you, behind you, to your left or to your right, someone can help you today. Now, next Sunday morning, we've got, uh, Pastor Joe, we got four or five to baptize, I think, and then Easter Sunday morning as well. So we thank the Lord for that. If you haven't yet followed through in believer's baptism, you've given your heart to Christ, please see Brother Nick here, our Pastor Nick, our missions pastor, or see Brother Jojo or myself. Let's get you ready to go, okay? Matter of fact, if you'll come get baptized, and don't you come for that purpose, but we even got brand new shirts we'll give you. And don't you dare come and get baptized just for the new shirt. Okay? But I just want you to know we got new shirts. All right? Now, um, I love you. I really, really love you. I'm praying that God's just going to continue to bless us. It's spring break. We've had two weekends of spring break. And our church, we've had great services, great attendance. And I just say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He has been very, very good to us. As you go out today, uh, Vacation Bible School table is out there for you to sign up and to get Vacation Bible School t-shirts as well. Please stop by. Miss Dawn, can I get you and maybe someone else to help me with giving out uh, our 1025 challenge cards? And uh, this month, we're encouraging you, if you would, uh, to make sure that, that you witness to someone, uh, that you don't miss a service. Uh, at least share the gospel twice and uh, make sure you give out at least five cards. That's 1025. You pray for that person. You make sure you find two people you're going to pray for. That's your 1025 challenge for the month of April. Okay, tonight, we don't do service on that night, but at Faith Baptist Church tonight, we're having our spring meeting. Uh, but it's a worship service. Uh, it's not a business meeting. Uh, my dear friend, and you've heard him preach, Barry Snap. Do y'all remember Brother Barry during the Bible conference? How many of y'all remember Brother Barry? Did y'all enjoy Brother Barry? Amen. He's going to be there preaching tonight. And uh, so I'm going to be there supporting him. You're welcome to come. It starts at 6 o'clock. I'm encouraging you as leaders to come. I believe God has a word for us tonight. And we'll gather there at 6 o'clock. You well know that we love our association. Uh, we believe in the next few weeks you'll be hearing some more good news about our association. Uh, I serve as the uh, vice chairman, soon to be chairman of the executive committee of our Georgia Baptist Convention, as well as we'll be attending our Southern Baptist Convention. So we are Baptist to the core. I told you last week, I'm Baptist born, Baptist bred, and when I'm gone, I'll be Baptist dead. Okay? However, our church is now 1025 Church. Do you agree with that, church? Hey, let me hear it now. Come on now. Come on. You, you do better than that. You can do better than that. We're excited about what God is doing in our midst. But thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I've got a pastor friend who's in the back. He's retired, been doing interims. Brother Roberts, could I get you to close us in a word of prayer? But hold on one second. Is there anything else? Pastor Jojo? Hey, let's thank all these folks who helped work the memorial service yesterday. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here. And I, I appreciate it. So Diane and I were out of town. And man, y'all took, took care of everything without a glitch, okay? All right. Brother Roberts, would you close us? Can you close us with that good preachery voice? And let's pray together.